my book buddies welcome to another reading video in today's video we're kind of going to be all over the place just doing book things book stuff books i'm getting a library card we're getting out some library books reading a thriller doing a blind date with a book doing some book shopping writing my book finding out how fast i read i feel like we're doing lots of stuff so welcome i'm so glad you're here and let's just dive right into this video Boston for a music festival, which is why I look like this. Uh, full denim outfit with these sunglasses at a, uh, 9 a.m. right now <laughs> on a Sunday. <laughs> but I actually have already been in this bookstore, so we're starting from the end, kind of. But this is Porter Street Books. It's in Boston. It's in the Seaport District. And oh my gosh, this bookstore was everything. It was so cute. It had a huge selection of books. I just loved everything. And it had like lots of cute bookish things. And they had blind dates with a book. And it's Pride Month. And they had so many gay options. So I said, we're doing a blind date with a book. I've never done that before. I spoiled it by saying it's gay. But I haven't opened it yet. We got a book. everything about this content is gonna be horrible I didn't bring my camera but I want to open my book so bad and see what it is so this is what I went with it says an LGBTQ plus fantasy fosters home for imaginary friends but make it gay so letters and the silver I just was so excited when I saw this oh my gosh stop I haven't shown you yet I could cry. I'm very dramatic. I'm a dramatic person. I was going to buy this anyway. Oh my gosh. I really thought that because it was a blind date with a book type thing that it was going to be a not popular book. It might have been a good book, but like something that wasn't selling and that's why they put it in there. But instead, I got a book that's been on my TBR forever. I'm so excited about this. So it's supposed to be like a really cozy queer fantasy. I am so excited about this. Hi, welcome to the library. I love the Halifax Public Library. I'll show you around. It is so beautiful, but I don't have a library card. I just use my wife's. So I'm going to go grab a library card and then specifically came here to work but when I was walking in I saw that the rapid read section has so many good books that I want to read. When you first walk in this is like the initial thing that you see. I have this book and I read it recently. Let's see what else we have. Oh I also have that Mercury. I haven't read it. This is what I saw though and was really really interested in I think I definitely want to get this one but I'm also really into this one this one and this one but I think I want to buy this one should I get two yeah let's do this one too normally I would buy all of Riley Sager's books but I think it's ghost so brand new books. These were just being put up when I got here. So perfect. I actually come to the library all the time because they have really great children's programs and a really fun children's area where the kids just love to play. My kids. So I'm so excited about this. A little pride section. I wonder if any of these. Oh, there's a lesbian romance. Only showing you this main little area, but there's like so many floors. This book is what I'm starting with of those two library books, and it has never been read. You know, you can just tell. 
I saw this at the bookstore. I looked at it because normally I would just buy it, especially because I only have a week to read this and my wife also will probably want to read it. It said haunted. Oh, here. It says like the past has a way of haunting the present. And I just saw haunted and immediately said, oh, it must be ghosty and put it down because I don't love when his books get ghosty. It's happened. I don't like that. I like reading a paranormal book or a horror book that's paranormal if I know that's what I'm reading. If I pick something up and anticipate it to be a thriller, I don't like when it turns out to be paranormal. So I have just started reading it. I'm 10 pages in. I'm making myself some lunch. I also was going to say that yesterday I was working on our book, but I only had like an hour and I met my writing goal, which was only a thousand words, which is a very small goal, but I only had an hour and sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get into the flow and also just like organizing my thoughts. Basically what's been happening is, never mind, the dogs won't stop drinking and I understand. I'm going to just read my book. We end up following Ethan in this story, I've realized. The story starts when once in the middle of the night, he is camping in his backyard with his best friend. I think he's eight years old. He wakes up in the morning and the tent feels a little brighter than it should be. He notices that there's a giant slash in the side of the tent and it's very quiet. He looks next to him and his best friend Billy is gone. There's no evidence as to who took him. No one has any clue what happens. And then we jump forward 30 years later. Ethan is back in that same house looking in the same yard where his best friend was snatched from his yard. And we know that in 30 years, they've never found Billy. They've never found any evidence. They have no clue where Billy is. And they refer to him as the lost boy. And it really shook kind of the whole country to show that in quiet suburbia, bad things can happen. That's kind of like what's happening so far in the first 14 pages of this book. But Ethan ends up becoming an English teacher and he talks about how he gave lessons, uh, guided bored teenagers through great expectations and to kill a mockingbird. And I wanna know, when you were in English class, what books did you have to read? Like what were your required readings? I've been thinking about that a lot lately for myself. I know I did AP English and also like advanced English and I, I loved, loved, loved English. Growing up, even though I've always been more of a science person, I love English, I love writing, I love reading. I know that I definitely read The Great Gatsby, The Outsiders, To Kill a Mockingbird, I read a lot of Shakespeare, I read Macbeth, The Merchant of Venice, I got to pick my own author to write and read a bunch of stuff about for AP English at one point. And I chose Jane Austen, so I read a lot of Jane Austen's work. But that's all I can think of. Those ones are the ones that really stick out in my mind that I know that I read. I loved The Outsiders. I'm actually constantly on a hunt for my own copy of it. I love the like Stay Golden Pony Boy. I don't know just always stuck in my head since I read it as like a 13, 14 year old. And I'm always on the hunt at thrift stores for a copy and I never see one. So one day we are going to find one. Will it be in this video? Who knows? But those are the ones that I really remember that like really stand out in my head. I feel like a lot of you are younger. So are those still the kinds of books that you read? Please let me know down below. Please give me a little list of, of which books you read in high school or are reading if you're that young. I did have someone message me recently and said that they love watching my books. It's like a big sister giving book recommendations, which I thought was very sweet. Better than your mom giving you book recommendations. I don't think I'm old enough to be any of your moms. Famous last words. Just a girl and her book. I'm going to sit here and enjoy my library book. Just taking in the view. It's probably a little bit windy because it's windy, so you probably can't hear me very well, but. So I ended up finishing Middle of the Night by Riley Sager, I think it's called. I think I've been saying it wrong for years and saying Sager. I think it's because I knew someone whose first name was Sager and like pronounced like that. But my thoughts. This review has kind of some spoilers in it. You might want to skip ahead. They're very vague spoilers, but like, I feel like you need to know why I didn't like the book, so I'm gonna say. 
First, I'm really glad that I got this out of the library and didn't buy it. <sighs> and guys, I was disappointed by this. I don't like anything paranormal to happen in my thrillers, and that seems to be the way that Riley Sager, Sager's <laughs> books are going. So he's had a few now that I have not enjoyed, and that's the main reason. I'm but in general, if I'm reading a thriller, I want the thrills to be real life. If I'm reading something paranormal, which I am willing to read, I want to know that it's paranormal. So it said something about he's haunted by his past, and I thought, is it gonna be ghosty? And my wife said, no, it's just a phrase. So I gave this a chance, and I only ended up giving it two stars. I think this is the weakest book, in my opinion, Riley Soccer's written. Normally he does really great twists and turns and he's such an amazing storyteller and there was something about this that just fell flat for me. It felt pretty dull, it felt lackluster, and it felt very predictable. And the main character in my opinion was so dull. Probably that's why I felt like it was very dull. And that's so disappointing because the last book I read by Riley, only one left, and I loved that one. I gave it five stars and then this one I gave two stars. But it makes me sad because he's one of my favorite thriller writers. I think that he is such a talented writer, but this just wasn't it for me. The paranormal elements in a thriller always bring it lower for me when it's unexpected, when I don't know that it's going to be paranormal and it's like, ooh, a ghost. That, that just ruins it for me. So that was a bit of a spoiler. I hate being negative in reviews. I feel like I've been really negative lately, but if I'm not enjoying a book, I don't want to lie to you and tell you that I'm enjoying it. But also, I do want to remind everyone that reviews of books are extremely subjective into what I personally like in books. So if you have different likes, you would enjoy this. He's a talented writer. It just wasn't for me. I have a confession to make. It's kind of like my dark, dirty little secret, and I don't know why that is. There is something reading related I have loved for a very long time, and I am always embarrassed to tell people. I will confess to you that this reading related thing that I read this genre, I will call it, of literature, I will call it, for I think an entire year. All I read for an entire year, I think, was. Hermione Granger, Draco Malfoy, Germione fan fiction. I love it. I don't know why. I don't have a reason. I like reformed Draco Malfoy. I have not read the fan fiction in a very long time. And I'm not saying that I am back in my Germione fan fiction era, but I will say I am reading a fan fiction. I'm reading it on my phone, but you can download them from AO3, like Archive of Our Own, it's called, which is a fanfiction website. You can download the files and put them on your e-reader, which is something that I do sometimes, but I'm just reading this on my phone, I don't know why. I am in a Facebook group for people that like Draco and Hermione um, fanfiction, and I will say that there is this one fan fiction that's been coming up like crazy because everyone was talking about how good it is. I think it only came out this year. I only like completed fanfics. Some people like when it's like you're watching your favorite show and every Sunday or Saturday or Monday, you know, you sit down, you read your new chapter, you tune in. It's great. I don't like that. I like to read things in completion and know how it happens because I get very impatient. And I also have a fear that I'm going to get invested into a fan fiction that's a work in progress and then they're going to stop it. They're just going to stop writing it and then I'm going to forever wonder what happened. So that is my deep dark secret that I'm sharing on the internet for you that I like Germany fan fiction. I have been waiting for the perfect cozy day to read this because cozy fantasy. I feel like it needs to be raining. I need to hear the rain on my roof. I need to be cuddled up with some candles lit and a cozy robe and that hasn't happened because it's summer. So I'm just gonna start it. Linus is a by-the-book caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. At 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records for company, but his quiet life is about to change. Linus is summoned by extremely upper management and given a curious and highly classified assignment. Travel to an orphanage on a distant island and determine whether six dangerous magical children are so dangerous. So it says that it's an enchanting love story. Oh, we have our little bookmark inside. Oh. Eat, sleep, read. 
I get it. Okay, let's go read in the hammock. Okay, it doesn't actually look cute from this angle. I was gonna show you how cute. Come on, look cute. Look cute. Oh my gosh, I have this adorable hammock here. Is it gonna look cute? There. This is my adorable hammock. I got it three years ago on Amazon and it's held up so well. I leave it outside year round and then I just bleach it whenever it gets like a little grimy and gross and wash it. And I have a portable hammock stand. It's amazing. I'm gonna link this setup. I live here in the summer. this I haven't read much what I would call cozy fantasy like not adventurous not high stakes I think the first one I ever read was legends and lattes which is also a queer book but I think that I might be a cozy fantasy person especially in the fall I can't think of anything better than curling up with like a happy-go-lucky happy feels book like this but I really liked this one. I know a lot of you really liked it too. I gave it five stars. So many of you messaged to say that this is one of your favorite books ever. And this was enjoyable to me. I think this is like the happiest book about the Antichrist in the world. <laughs> this is so random, but I don't know how fast I read. And I just got really curious about it. So I'm going to do a reading speed test to see how quickly I can read. I just Googled it. This one's called Outread. Let's try it, I guess. So I think I'm just gonna like read a little passage and then do some comprehension. Average readings, average words per minute reading speed. The average reader can read 238 words per minute when reading silently. I read 431, but I only have a 67%. Accuracy rate. So if this teaches you anything, it's that you can read fast, but you're not necessarily uh, taking in all the details. This came about because I was watching BookTube. I was watching another person's video and they said that they average 120 pages an hour. So they read very fast. And if I'm lucky, I think I can read about a page a minute. So I was shocked at that, but it's two pages a minute. That's wild. 120 pages an hour. Oh my goodness, think of how many more books I could consume if I could read twice as fast. That'd be pretty cool, but obviously I wouldn't be getting all the details, so maybe not worth it, but very, very cool for them that they can read that fast. I wish I could, honestly. Guess what I found on a recent trip to a bookstore? I went to this really cute bookstore in PEI. I spent way too much on the three books that I got. The thing that was a little hard about it is it said it was a rare new and used bookstore. So my wife and I thought that we were getting books that maybe were used and I didn't realize that they are very expensive. Also, I don't know if this is allowed. On the books that we got the kids, you know how on the back of a book they write the price? This bookstore had scratched out the price and had actually wrote a price that was higher than what it said on the book. So I feel like I got scammed, honestly. Make sure you're really paying attention to the prices if you go there. But I did get a copy of The Outsiders, which I know I said I had been looking for. I thought that I would be able to find a used copy there, but they only had this one, which I think is new. It's the 50th anniversary edition. It has a little stay gold on the back. I'm really happy that I finally got my hands on this book and I can put it in my library just because I really liked this when I was growing up and in English like I said so I'm pretty excited to maybe read it one day in the future. I'm not adding it to my TBR because it would be a reread so we're just gonna put it on the shelf up there in the black section but I'm just happy that I finally got my hands on one although I probably could have got one for two dollars at a thrift store it's just I've been looking for years for a copy and I've never seen one so I feel like I got scammed though, guys, honestly. 
And that is where we're going to leave things today. Thank you so much for watching. Really, it means the world to me. I can't even explain. Doing these videos is so fun for me. Like, this is my little hobby, my passion project. It brings me so much joy. And knowing that some of you will sit through these videos, watch them till the end, like, it just means so much to me. So thank you so much. I'll be back really soon with another video. And I'll see you then.